So a solid cylinder, surface two, is located at the center of a hollow sphere, which is surface one. The diameter of the sphere is one meter, and the cylinder has a diameter and length of 0.5 each. What is the radiation configuration of F11? So F11, which one is one? It's hollow sphere one. So F11, that's asking us, how much does the sphere see itself? Right? That's what F11 is saying. Let's have a little, let's draw this problem here, A. We have a cylinder. Let me draw my beautiful cylinders. That is inside a sphere. So let's draw this sphere. Okay, so that's the situation that we have there. We have a, a cylinder that is inside a sphere. Let's see what's going on here. If we take any place in the sphere, for instance, over here, this sphere will be emitting energy like so, right? Note that some of that energy will eventually reach the cylinder. Do another one. But some of that energy will see itself. So it's going to go back to the same body, be emitted and absorbed later on by the same body. The question is how, what's the proportion or how much, what's the percentage of the sphere that sees itself? So let's just put the names of our things. This is uh, two, right? This is one. What else? The radius of the sphere is one, is 0.5 meters because the diameter is one. The radius of the cylinder is 0.25 meters because the diameter is 0.5. And the length of the cylinder is two, but there's no length for this one, it is 0.5, right? So those are the dimensions that we're dealing with. What are the possibilities here? We have how much the sphere sees itself. We have how much the sphere sees the cylinder. We have how much the cylinder sees itself and how much the cylinder sees the sphere. Okay, those are the possibilities in this problem. Now, our job is to find out this guy here. And to find that guy there, we need to find pretty much the other. Okay. Note that if we sum up every single, uh, there's no other way for the, this energy that I just drew in red here, there's no other place for it to go except to the sphere or to the cylinder. So if we sum these two guys up, they have to be one. Okay, likewise, all the energy that leaves the cylinder either has to go back to the cylinder or has to go to the sphere. So this has, some of it has to be one as well. So we're gonna use those relationships to be able to determine this. Now, let me pause the video and see if you guys have any insights. So let's think about our cylinder, right? Our cylinder has two flat surfaces, one on the bottom, one on top, right? So it's flat surfaces, it's gonna send all energy around like so. On the bottom, same thing, right? And I just probably use a different color for the cylinder and the sphere, right? And we also have the round part and the round part is gonna be sending energy outwards. So note that the cylinder is made of a convex and a flat, or actually I should say a convex and two flat surfaces. So in other words, what does that tell us? It tells us that by observation, by observation, F22 B0, right? F22 will be zero. If F22 is zero, if F22 is zero, then F21 is one. So what does F21 mean one means? It means that all the energy leaves the cylinder has to go to the sphere somehow. Okay, and now we can use reciprocity, right? Because we can combine these two guys here through reciprocity. And then we can solve for that. And when we solve for that, then we can solve for F11. What does reciprocity say? says that F12 times the area of one has to be equal to F21 times the area of two. F21 is one, so that means that F12 equals area of two divided by area of one. So what is it saying? The, how much the sphere sees a cylinder is a ratio between the area of the cylinder and the area of the sphere. What is the area of a cylinder? Well, it's gonna be the top and the bottom side. So we have two times pi r squared, r2, right? Plus these, the side part, which is two pi r l. 
And on the area of the sphere, we have four pi r1 squared. Okay, so that is the relationship we need to solve. Know that we have everything, right? We have everything we need to be able to solve that. Um, where I want to do that, I probably want to do that over here. So f12 equals. Um, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate some things. Pi, we have pi on every everywhere. And then we have two, two, and four, which will just transform into two there. So this is saying that 0.25 squared plus, um, what is my R2.25 times 0.5 divided by two times um, 0.5 squared is equal to my U factor, F12. And this turns out to be, let's see, where is my, Calculations. Point three seven five. And if this is the case, therefore, F one one has to be one minus point three seven five, which in turn is. 0.625. Okay, so what do we know now? We know that 62.5% um, of the energy that leaves the sphere is being absorbed by the sphere by itself while 37.5 of the energy leaves us here is absorbed by the cylinder, right? So that is how we solved shape factors. And then obviously this could ask, you could tell you the temperatures of the sphere and the cylinder and ask you to find Q and all of that. But the bottom line is, 62% of the energy that leaves the sphere is actually being is actually being received by the sphere again, like on this these cases here. Right? And only about 40% actually reaches the cylinder here in the middle. All right, so let's stop this video. If you have any questions.